everybody. My name is Susan, Susan Monroe. I'm a watercolor artist living in the southern U.S. and today I'm going to be doing a little tutorial on how to paint the color yellow, particularly how to shade it. I know this can be tricky for a lot of people. It was tricky for me for a long time because how do you shade it without it becoming yucky or muddy or green? So I've got four different ways that I'm going to show you on how to shade the color yellow and whichever one you choose will be up to your personal preference and the the photo you're working from the effects you want to get also we're going to talk just a little bit about color theory i'll make it quick and painless i promise and then uh, i think you'll be able to go out go forth and paint beautiful yellow spring flowers i mean here where i live the daffodils are already out um just a little early but and as usual i'm going to divide the video up into sections that'll be noted down in the description below. So if you wanna to skip to a certain part, you can go ahead and, and do that. If maybe there's one way of shading that you like better than another, you'll know right where it is. So when you revisit this video, you can go back and find it. And I also wanna say thank you for visiting my channel. I hope that you'll give this video a thumbs up and that you will subscribe to my channel and then click the bell icon until you'll be notified when I put up more videos, which I'm trying to do once or twice a week. Thanks so much for watching, and now let's get going with the painting. So we're going to start with just a little basic color theory. And this is my color wheel that I've made. These are the primary colors, red, blue, yellow. These are the colors from which all other colors are made, okay? They can't be made by mixing something else. Red, blue, and yellow, that's why they're called primary. They're the first colors. Then you can make secondary colors. That would be red and yellow making orange, yellow and blue making green, blue and red making purple, which I'm sure we all learned about in elementary school. Then you can go beyond that into tertiary colors. That would be mixing a secondary color with a primary color. So you might be mixing purple and red to make red purple, red and orange to make red orange, orange and yellow to make yellow orange, and so on. So you can see there's just an endless variety of colors that go around the color wheel. So the color we're most concerned with on the color wheel today though is yellow and how to shade the color yellow. So one way that some people might try to do it would be to use more of the same color. I've seen people start with a light, light layer of yellow and then put more and more of the same color on it to strengthen that and make it look darker or more intense and make a yellow shadow that way. That's one way. The second way, and I think is really one of the best ways, is to use analogous colors. And analogous colors are the colors that are beside each other on the color wheel. So the colors that are analogous to yellow are yellow-orange, orange, on up this way, or yellow-green, green, blue-green, blue down this way. So the colors on this side of the color wheel are cool colors. Think of plants, think of water. Those are all the cool colors. The colors on this side are the warm colors. When we think of fire, those are all the colors you would see in a fire. So when you are shading with the yellow, if you use the analogous colors on this side, you're gonna make a warm shadow. If you use the analogous colors down this way, you're going to make a cooler shadow. So that's something to think of when you're looking at your shadows. Not all shadows are just gray. They can have color in them from reflected light. Say they're on a colorful surface. That color on the surface will reflect into the shadow and can make your shadow warmer or cooler. Okay, another great way to make a shade with yellow is to add its complementary color. Complementary colors are opposite each other on the color wheel. So the complementary color to yellow is purple. If you place yellow and purple next to each other, they are going to bring out the best in each other. They are going to make each other pop and make each other more dynamic. On the other hand, if you mix yellow and purple together, you're going to get a neutral color and that's a uh, a cancellation of color. They cancel each other out and will make a gray, grayish yellow, grayish purple, depending which color you have more of, but they'll cancel each other out. And then the last way I'd like to think about making a shadow with yellow would be to use that neutral color and glaze the neutral color over the yellow to make a shadow. So that's another way. So the four ways we're going to talk about making a shadow with yellow are the same color, just glaze over with the same color, 
Second way is going to be to use an analogous color, a neighboring color on the color wheel. The third way to shade yellow will be to use its complementary color, the color opposite on the color wheel. And the fourth way would be to use a neutral color, a neutral color over the yellow to make that shadow. So now that I've explained it, let's get going and I'm going to give you an example of each one. Now to demonstrate each type of shading, I'm going to use this picture of a lemon. And you can see on the lemon, we have the highlight right here where the light is striking it and the shadow under here. This is the body shadow or the form shadow, the shadows on the form. Underneath here would be the cast shadow. I'm not worrying so much about the cast shadow. I'm talking about the form shadow, the shadow that you see within the petals of the flower or the shadow you see on the shape of the lemon. So here we have the main body of the shadow and under here will be the reflected light, the light that's reflecting off the surface that the lemon is sitting on back onto the lemon. So any shadow would have some reflected light in it. Shadows will reflect whatever color is near them. In this case, it's white. So let's get going. I'm gonna draw a lemon or two to show each example of how I'm gonna shade with yellow. So here I've drawn my lemon and I'm going to paint it all winter yellow. And I realized I forgot to leave my highlight, so I'm going to take a paper towel and blot out an area to be my highlight on my lemon. So now we're going to just use the same color, Windsor Yellow, to try and make our shadow under here. And you can see just the fact that it has a highlight already gives this lemon some dimension. I'm going to glaze a little more yellow under here. Some of you might wonder, why don't I just use a black or use Payne's Gray? Um, those colors don't play nicely with yellow. They will end up looking muddy and ugly and generally be too strong. It's really not a good mix. Strengthen this a little more. You can see I'm putting a strong shadow along here and then leaving a lighter area down here to be my reflected light. So there's a little shadow coming up this way too. I've washed out my brush with some clean water and I'm just gonna soften the edges with clean water on my brush. It's important to remember that watercolors dry about 20% lighter than they look when they're wet. So this looks lighter than it did when it was wet. And I'm gonna come again with another layer of yellow to reinforce my shadow. Again, this is all just winter yellow. So there's an example of making a shadow with the exact same color. It makes a nice shadow. It's, it's very light, but I think we can use some analogous colors to make a more intense shadow. So let's go on and do that next. So I've drawn my lemon and painted it a light shade of winter yellow. To darken it, we're gonna do analogous colors this time. And I think before I even put the analogous color on, I am gonna darken it with a little bit of just the body color, that lemon yellow. Colors from the color wheel that would be analogous, I'm gonna go warm with this, would be the Indian yellow, the New Gamboge, yellow ochre, even the burnt sienna, or the sepia. I'm going to go with a little bit of Indian yellow. As you can see it's a deeper, more vibrant color to make the shadow out of. I'm going to let it dry and then go in a little more. Let's try a new analogous color. Let's go with the yellow ochre and see what happens. And there you go. Here is an example 
of shading yellow with an analogous shadow in the warm range. And we can compare it to a shadow using the same color. And I think you can see what I mean. This is a little more luminous, a little more vibrant. They both give form to the lemon, but this just has a little something extra. Okay, as you see, I have put my Windsor Yellow down already on this lemon, and now we're gonna experiment a little bit with some purple, some of the complementary colors to yellow on the color wheel. So the purples that I have in my palette here are bright violet, this is ultramarine violet, and this is a permanent magenta. So let's see how the shadow works. If I add a little of this bright violet on here, just going to glaze very gently over it. So what's going on here is that instead of mixing together and making a neutral color, mixing wet, they are mixing on the page. They are mixing as you look at them to give you this more neutral color. I'm going to add some more yellow. Now I'm going to dry it. I feel like I messed up my glazing a little bit when I went back over it with the brighter yellow. So let me glaze once again with this bright violet. Yeah. And I'm not, not putting it all the way to the bottom because I'm showing that reflected light. And then softening the edges. See, it makes a very nice shadow. some of the freckles, the little spots, the lemon. Okay, now I'm gonna go even darker. Let this dry first though, and then try my ultramarine or my permanent magenta. I think I'm gonna go with the permanent magenta. It's a very, very pretty purple, and I'm gonna go light on it. I don't want a super intense shadow. I don't want the purple to just totally overpower the yellow. Let's see if I can make that shadow a little darker. And I'm gonna put a light, light coat of yellow over this purple, just to smooth it out a little bit. It looks a little blotchy. And I think it needs to be brightened up just a little bit. So I'm glazing over it with my winter yellow. There you go. Here we go, a shadow using the complementary colors. Now onto a neutral color. So remember, a neutral color is a color that is made by mixing colors that are opposite each other on the color wheel. Okay, so colors that are opposite each other on the color wheel will mix to make a neutral. They will neutralize each other. So you might wonder why not just go ahead and use a gray that you already have, and you can. I mean, you can. It's just that when two colors are mixed, it gives a more complicated and nuanced look to your shadow because you're you're just employing more more color let me show you an example of using a gray on the yellow okay, here i have the color davy's gray davy's gray is a very very light gray and if i layer that over the yellow do get a gray full neutral, but it does have a touch of green to it. And also, let me just show you what happens if we put a little Payne's gray over the yellow. More of a blue-green, once again, because Payne's gray is a blue-based color. So if I were using one of these grays to shade my lemon, I would definitely use the Davies gray before I would use the, um, the Payne's gray. I think the Payne's gray is just too blue and you can see it's really making green on the edges there. But what if we make a neutral 
by mixing yellow and purple. You can see they're canceling each other out. So we have a nice neutral here. Let me go in. Look at this. Let's put a little more yellow in the rest of the lemon. So you can see where I messed up here. I've gotten some of these little blooms or cauliflowers where that wet yellow went down into this neutral that was drier than I thought it was. No big deal, I can fix it. I'm just gonna put neutral on here again, soften it and just leave it to dry before I touch anything else. So as you can see, neutral can make a convincing shadow, but you do have to watch out it can make your yellow look a little dirty, which I think is what's happening here. It looks a little like dirt and not so much like shadow. Putting a glaze of yellow over it. The whole lemon has really gotten a little faded and dirty looking. I wouldn't pick this one up in the grocery store for sure. Now, you know, we could make other neutrals. You could mix orange and blue. You can mix green and red, and I will leave that up to y'all to experiment with using, using those neutrals if you'd like to in shading your lemon. But here's a neutral made by purple and yellow to make that shadow. And it works, but it's definitely my least favorite. So finally, here are our four examples making shadows on yellow using the same color. An analogous color, warm, a complementary color, and a neutral. Which one is your favorite? I, I think I like the analogous best, but the complementary is nice as well. It makes a darker shadow. Same, worked okay, this neutral. Anyway, I hope you all enjoyed this video and I hope that you will like and subscribe to my channel. And I just wanna say thanks so much for watching and good luck painting. Let me know how it turns out making your yellow shadows. Take care.